Good morning everybody. Hope everybody is doing okay. Um, I just have a few more things on the Montana um, Supreme Court reversal and I want to thank Laura very much for sending me the link to the Zalkin press release and I will read that in just a minute. But I have a message for Jehovah's Witnesses and I know like Mike's mom and my mom they hated lying. I mean, if we ever lied, oh my God, as kids, we would get beat. So it just amazes me that Jehovah's Witnesses, for the most part, they won't even believe any of these stories or anything. And I'm sure there's great rejoicing at Watchtower. But, you know, that reversal was really sad, and it's disgusting, because... Is this going to discourage other abuse survivors from coming forward? And I had a lot of phone calls yesterday, a lot of upset people. And I have to ask, you know, first thing I thought of is, were these Supreme Court justices in Montana paid off? You know, the old payola bribed. That's what you got to ask. Especially in light of Zalkin's you know, press release. But first I want to share something with Jehovah's Witnesses. We know how the organization feels about you being honest. Proverbs 331 Do not become envious of the man of violence, nor choose any of his ways. 32 For the devious person is a detestable thing to Jehovah, but his intimacy is with the upright ones. This is why God the Father, the Source, would have nothing to do with the Watchtower organization. Isaiah 28, 15 Because you men have said, we have concluded a covenant with death, and with Sheol we have effected a vision, the overflowing flash flood in case it should pass through will not come to us for we have made a lie our refuge and in falsehood we have concealed ourselves this isn't me saying this this is your new world translation that you hold so dear and want to make Jehovah's Witnesses hold to oh you have to follow everything in this book you know you can't give your children blood transfusion because the book says to avoid blood. What about avoiding lies and deception? That's what I have to ask. All right. The Zalkin Law Firm press release. A little bit too far away. <laughs> We have received inquiries and concern about a Montana Supreme Court's decision to reverse a $35 million judgment against the Jehovah's Witnesses. What people should know is that this opinion is limited to the facts of that case and to that court's interpretation of the law of Montana and does not establish precedent in other jurisdictions. So that's a good thing to hear because I just was sick to my stomach to think that other courts now, other lawyers, would try to use, you know, this particular case. Oh, well, this is what the Montana Supreme Court, so now this sets a precedence. We know the lawyers who represented the victim in that case, and in our opinion, they did a fine job. Unfortunately, based on our reading of the Montana Supreme Court's opinion, the court was misled by testimony offered by the JW's in-house expert in their child abuse policies and practices. And this wouldn't be the first time Watchtower lied trying to get out of paying um, abuse survivors. The case hinged on whether the way in which the JW's handle reports of child sexual abuse falls within an exception to Montana's clergy mandated reporting law. Relying heavily on the testimony of Dave Chappelle from the service department, the Montana Supreme Court concluded that the policies and practices of the JW's is to keep such information confidential. Even if it is shared between elders of the congregation and elders of the service department, and even if elders are free to disclose that information to law enforcement should they decide to do so, 
thereby entitling the JWs to the confidentiality exception to the obligation of clergy to report suspicions of child sexual abuse. In essence, the court's conclusion is that where a religious organization says it is required to keep such information confidential as a tenet of its religion, despite evidence to the contrary, the court is going to accept what it says as controlling. The JWs also argue that civil courts should not second guess how they deal with reports of child sexual abuse because doing so violates the JW's First Amendment right to the free exercise of its religion. That argument has failed in dozens of cases. The U.S. Supreme Court has recognized that civil courts can enforce neutral laws that are intended to apply to everyone equally. Laws that protect children from child abusers are neutral and not targeted to any one religion. Over the course of the past decade of litigating cases against the JWs, we have obtained numerous court opinions that have found the opposite of what the Montana Supreme Court determined to be the case. We feel very badly for the victim in this case. What this case shows very clearly is that the JWs continue to place secrecy and protection of known child molesters above the safety of children. Shame on them. And I wholeheartedly agree with this. And this is lawyers saying this, not me. That this um, representative of their service department lied to the court. And this is why Watchtower does not want Jehovah's Witnesses reading these court documents. They don't want listening, them listening to videos about these court cases. Don't even believe the news because it's Satan's media. Talk about an isolated bubble. This is going on right underneath their noses and they don't even know it. See, and Watchtower has done a really good job to where the fully indoctrinated ones, like our moms, they're not even going to talk to us. They're not going to listen to us. Because they, Watchtower knows that all of us ex-members, we know what's going on. We see this stuff. We're not afraid to read these court documents. We're not afraid to read these press releases. And you know what? We don't believe it's Satan's media doing this just persecuting the poor Jehovah's Witnesses. But they don't want their members to know that. And this is why they're trying to isolate them even more. So anyway, thank you everybody for watching and we hope you have a great weekend. Bye.